So I've been playing Fortnite competitively on controller for about six years. And in this video, I've combined all the tips that I've learned throughout the years from not only playing, but also watching every single improvement guide on controller. And I've combined it together to make the ultimate improvement guide on controller in Fortnite. Now, I'm sure some of you are watching right now thinking, why should we listen to you? I've never seen you before. If I have seen you, it's been a while ago. And why should I take tips from you? Well, first to start off, I've been Unreal ranked every single season since Fortnite rank came out. I have over $30,000 in competitive earnings, including builds and zero builds. I'm also very known for my insane controller mechanics on YouTube. I posted a lot of montage that's gotten millions of views from my skills. So before we get into it, if you guys are new here, hit that subscribe button with the post notification bell on. First up, we're gonna be talking about how to perfect your edits on controller, which is arguably the hardest skill to master on controller. Everyone knows that controller players are at a huge mechanical disadvantage, especially when fighting keyboard players. But with that mechanical disadvantage comes the advantage of aiming better. So to make yourself a top elite controller player, you need to figure out your edit binds the correct way. So everyone knows the default edit binds is either circle or B, and to edit, you actually have to hold that button down. And of course, holding any button is a huge huge disadvantage, especially if you're mid-fight. But then when you combine holding the edit button down and then editing itself, puts you at a severe mechanical disadvantage. However, there's a secret trick that makes editing super easy on controller, and that's simply binding your edit bind to another button. But if you do decide to use the default button, which is either circle or B, you would not be able to look around while editing like this unless you were playing on claw. So as you can see, there's absolutely no delay when I go to edit this wall right here. I can literally simply do this and then reset as fast as possible. And so for me personally, I am a claw player. So as you can see, I edit with triangle that I confirm with circle right there, and that is really fast me because I play the claw grip. Now, most people actually don't use a claw or have a scuff. And if that's you, you guys need to come into your controller settings, go to the edit tab right here. And as you can see, you need to find your edit bind right here. And for those of you who don't play claw or have a scuff, you need to change your edit bind to the left stick, also known as L3. And what this is going to do is simply allow you to edit a lot faster, allow you to not take your thumb off the analog stick, which will automatically improve your Fortnite skills by tenfold if you try this strategy that I just told you. And if you actually do play claw or have a scuff like I do, you can simply just bind whatever feels comfortable for you. Like I said, triangle for edit and and circle confirm works well for me. As you can see, I'm just free building right now. But if you guys do play claw controller and want an easy edit bind, the touchpad is an amazing edit bind for claw players, especially as your index finger is right beside your edit bind at all times. For tip number two, I'm gonna be talking about how you play on controller, such as if you play claw, non-claw, paddles, regular PS4 controller, or with a scuff. And I'm about to tell you guys the best tips that you guys need to stick to if you wanna improve right now. The first and honestly, the most important thing is, is that you guys should not be using a regular PS4 or PS5 controller without any paddles or some type of attachment to help you, such as paddles paddle or using the claw grip. So that means if you're using a standard PS4 controller like this and you're holding it the default way like this, this is the worst possible way that you could be holding your controller and it's honestly what's holding you back. And listen, I know a lot of people will try to quote unquote flex by saying, oh, I'm this good and I use non-claw, non-paddles. But I am telling you right now with everyone still advancing every single day and getting better, especially in this day of time in Fortnite, it's been out for almost seven years. People are gonna keep improving over and over and eventually you're gonna get left behind, especially with how insane most controller pros are these days. So whatever controller you guys play at a regular PS4, PS5 controller, whatever. I highly recommend you guys buying attachable paddles, which can be pretty cheap. I think they go for like 40 bucks. I'm pretty sure they're labeled Strike Pack. If you guys would have looked that up, it's basically an attachable magnetic paddle that you can map to the back of your controller. And again, it only costs like 40 bucks. And I'm pretty sure Sony and Microsoft themselves sell attachable paddles that you just plug into your controller and you're good to go. And again, the prices are going to range anywhere from 30 to $50, which if you're looking to buy a scuff just for the paddles, that's almost a $175 price difference, which in my opinion is huge if you guys are looking to try to save money, especially especially around the holiday season. Now, for me personally, I use a default standard PS4 controller, but I play on the claw grip. And claw grip is a grip used by most controller players. It basically allows you to grip your controller like this. And when you're playing, you never take your hand off this right analog stick, allowing you to have perfect edits and almost perfect aim. So me personally, I've been playing claw grips since Black Ops 3 came out, which was around seven years ago. And that's about the time Fortnite came out. And let me tell you boys, as soon as I switched to claw grip on Fortnite, I was instantly better than everyone I played with. I promise you the second you switch from default playing on a default controller, to using even just one paddle, your skill will increase, in my opinion, by 110%. All you guys have to do is just practice and learn how to get better on whichever style you want to play with, whether that be claw grip or using paddles. And I promise you, just doing one of those two things will make you an insanely better controller player, and especially if you want to start taking Fortnite serious as a controller pro. And if you guys do getting up either one or two paddles for the right side, I highly recommend that either being your switch mode or jump. Same with your left paddle, it needs to either be switch mode or jump right here, so you can easily jump right here or use your switch mode and be an insane controller player with your edits and mechanics. Now for the third tip of the video is gonna be playing with the intent of getting better. And honestly, I don't see a lot of pro players talking about this, even though it's one of the most important key aspects of becoming a good player overall. And I'm pretty sure they don't mention that just because they don't want people catching up or having even more competition, which is why they don't tell you guys that. But I got you, you already know me. Now I really started improving on Fortnite back in 2019, 2020. For those of you OGs who know when I used to start posting those insane montages or getting insane 20 to 30 kill games in solo squads in chapter two back in 2020. But before that, I was kind of mediocre 
slash bad at the game. I'm not going to lie. And that's simply because I would put myself in bad situations. I wouldn't push anyone. I would just camp it a one by one or just sit in a bush the entire game, which obviously did not allow my skill to progress in game where it matters the most. Or I would just be kind of vibing, having Spotify open, chilling with my friends, having fun, not really taking it too serious. And I always wondered why I wasn't improving. And it's simply because I wasn't playing with the intent of getting better, which is what you have to do with anything you want to get better at in life, not just Fortnite on controller. So I'm telling you right now, if you guys are serious about improving and going pro or not even going pro, but just improving in general as a controller player, here are the things you need to do. First up, don't have music in the background unless you're already an extremely good controller player. It's just an extra distraction that you don't need. And from now on, it doesn't matter what game mode you're playing, such as solo no builds, builds a 1v1 warm up with your friends. It doesn't matter what you do, but you better go in there with no music. The mentality that you know and you want to actually get better. And you need to be trying your absolute hardest in everything you do, such as the 1v1 warm ups, the solo builds, no builds, whatever it is, you need to be trying your hardest because that's the only way you're going to improve your skill gap. And listen, I know if you're playing with your friends a lot or if you're one v wanting them for a warm up, they might give you some crap of, dude, why are you trying so hard? It's not that serious. Well, that's the exact point. You have to have the mindset that you want to go in here and improve and you're going to try your hardest every day. You're going to show up. You're going to put in the extra work when no one else wants to, such as trying your hardest and a one v one, even if it's against a warm up against your friends, because doing little things like that every single day will eventually separate you from the pack because you have been trying so hard and slowly over time, you're going to improve every single day, little by little, which adds up to a lot. And the two things that honestly helped me the most is one be wanting my friends in creative, but being very, very serious about it and also playing solo squads because that's going to teach you how to adapt to different situations. Even if you're in like a 1v2 scenario in a tournament, it's going to teach you how to adapt under pressure, when to fight, when not to fight, learn timings of your opponent and many more. That's why I really, really recommend anyone to play either solo duos, solo trios or solo squads, but solo squads is honestly the best one. If you guys are looking to approve, you need to go in with the mentality. Listen, I'm probably not going to win this game because it's solo versus squad, but if you keep doing it, I promise you over and over, you're eventually going to be insane because you're constantly fighting solo versus squads, obviously. And moving on to tip number four, which is going to be stop camping. Now, I know when you hear me say that, you're probably like, oh, that's easy. Just stop camping. That's very simple to understand. And no, what many people get this wrong, and they honestly don't know what I'm talking about. Now, the majority of controller players in Raid become fearful when they hear their opponents doing a bunch of quad editing, or they know they're on keyboard and have insane mechanics causing the controller player to either try to get an off angle on them or just camp or just run away entirely from the fight. And listen, guys, I know it's very uncomfortable or it's not very fun, especially when you're just trying to start to get good to fight an insane keyboard demon. It can be very frustrating if you don't know what to do, which is why I'm here to help you guys as much as I possibly can. And I'm telling you right now, if you guys hear a keyboard player or not even a keyboard player, just a good player in general, and you become fearful or camp in a cone or completely run away from the fight, this is doing literally nothing except putting limits on your potential. See, this is you right here, and this is your potential. When you stop or when you camp someone, you hit a ceiling because you're not confident enough in your abilities to fight this player. And I'm sorry to break it to you, but you're never going to be confident enough if you don't just man up and just fight this player and try to play it smart and outplay your opponent. And one thing that you guys need to understand is that ranked is not not life or death. It's not a tournament for a million dollars. Ranked is simply a good system to place you whatever rank that you deserve to be in and whoever you're going against who you think is a demon is probably the same rank as you are and is no better than you are. So if you guys are in platinum, diamond, or elite, it doesn't matter which rank. You guys should stop camping trying to get to Unreal just to prove that quote unquote you're in Unreal just by camping in a bush. Like come on bro. We are not bush camp dad and even though he's a goat, obviously he's not the best player because all he does is camp. Which proves my point exactly. And also what happens is if you're in ranked and all you do is camp for the win, you're eventually going to get up to those higher ranks where players are super sweaty. But every time you try to go to fight someone, you're more than likely going to end up getting packed up because you have been camping the entire time, avoiding all fights, and you're honestly not the rank that you should be, and you only got there by camping, not necessarily your skill. So what you need to do is W key every single person in your lobby with confidence, because at the end of the day, all you should care about is improving. It doesn't matter if you lose percentage, D rank, it does not matter. Eventually, you're going to get back up, and you're going to surpass your level, and get unreal, and becoming the insane controller demon that both me and you know you always can be if you just apply yourself. And for example, I watch streamers like Mongrel, Mr. Savage, Faceway, who's currently number one in the world, by the way. And all they do is W key. Never do I ever click on a Faceway stream and not see him sitting in a box or in a cone. And there's a reason for that. It's because he's so good. He's been doing it for the past five years. He knows what he's doing, but he put in the time to get good. And now all he does is W key people. And his potential is endless because he's not scared. He's confident with every fight. And that's how you should be playing if you guys are serious about improving. And for tip number five, which is arguably the most important tip on this list, is that when you find the perfect controller settings that you personally enjoy, you need to never switch those controller settings under any circumstances ever, unless it's by like one decibel or 1%. So for example, if you look at someone like Re, Face, Way, or Clicks, now I know Clicks is on keyboard, but he's recently said in his live stream that he literally hardly ever changes his settings. And him, Face, Way, Re, and many others, they've all been using pretty much the same settings for the past like four to five years. And by never changing their settings, it makes them consistently good because they're very used to their settings and not switching them up every single week. And here are my 
Red controller settings right here if you guys want to copy them down. Now, this is what works for me. I'm not saying that these settings are going to work for you, but these are my current settings that I use to get Unreal in Chapter 5. So as you can see, I play on a 4-4 look in ADS sensitivity. Most controller players that I see, such as myself, Faceway, Reed, we all play on either 3 to 6, in my opinion. I feel like 3 to 6 is a very good sensitivity for the both look sensitivity and aiming sensitivity. For build and edit mode, it's going to be 2.1 by 2.2. The look horizontal and vertical speed are both 43-43. Now, you can obviously tweak that if you guys do decide to use my settings. I honestly don't like boost. I don't use boost. I really don't like boost at all with anything. My aiming sensitivity and what's got me accused of using aimbot, especially on TikTok, is going to be 12-12 for this chapter. If you guys have been on my TikTok streams, you guys know all the little Timmy's accuse me of using aimbot. It's all good, though. I do play on linear and I do play on 5-5 dead zone and, of course, with the claw grip as well. But again, once you guys find a sensitivity that feels right to you and is the perfect sensitivity for you, I highly recommend you guys hardly ever change it. Like, I've been using pretty much these same settings for the past, like, four years. Now, I, I may occasionally go to, like, 2.3 by 2.2 or something like this, but for now, I'm on 2.1 by 2.2, and maybe I'll tweak this by, like, a couple percentages, but usually, I stay pretty much in this range, and I rarely ever move or change it, which allows me to be so consistent. And if you guys are on Fortnite right now, and you appreciate me giving you these insane secret tips, it would mean the world to me if you guys come into the shop and use my code. It means the entire world to me, and shout out to everyone using the code. And for a secret bonus tip is that having a good loadout on controller is way more complicated and difficult than having a good loadout on keyboard. So for example, on keyboard and mouse, everyone knows that you can switch to whatever weapon or whatever slot you want in an instant just by tapping on whichever slot you want and you instantly go to that slot. But whereas on controller, you have to use your bumper to individually switch to each slot one by one, which is insanely slower and puts us at a huge mechanical disadvantage. And here's what every single pro controller player's loadout looks like and what you need to copy in your game. And your first slot should always be your shotgun as it's very easy to switch to your first slot, especially after you get done building your editing, which is crucial in like build and box fights. Your next slot should either be your SMG or your AR, whichever you're using as your spray weapon, with the next two slots consisting of heals, which in this season need to be big pots and med kids. And for the last slot, it needs to be mobility so you can get away or chase someone quickly with just a tap of a bumper. And if you guys didn't know, Fortnite actually has a built-in setting that will help you do that. And all you guys have to do is go to preferred item slots and then arrange your inventory just like I have mine right here. So it should be shotgun, SMG, consumable, consumable, and then assault rifle or utility. But as I said, if you're only using two guns right here, then you need to put your shotgun, spray weapon, two healing items, and then you can move this to your utility, which is going to end up being your mobility item. And if you boys did make it this far into the video, I appreciate you. Make sure to comment hashtag controller gang down in the comments below so I know who made it this far and who truly wants to improve and get better at four. Subscribe with that noti bell if you guys are new so you don't miss a video. Peace.